Hello, just want to make a quick video. I got some good books, and uh, I've been thinking about a lot of the 1990s recently, so. Uh, let's see here. So I guess I'll start with two classics that I got. I've been wanting them for a while. I've already read uh, one of them. First one I haven't read is uh, Ovid, it's Metamorphoses, or Transformations. Yeah, for obvious reasons, the story of Orpheus, and uh, I can't remember who it was, but somebody said that they basically, like all of their stories are variations on the stories in here. Oh, and also this is really good painting, Narcissus, and then uh, whoever that is on the back, I can't remember. Echo, yeah, I should have known that. Echo and Narcissus. So, yep, that's that's a good one, number one. And then the Iliad is the one I've read. I got the Richmond Lattimore translation. I read it in the Fagels when I was young, before I got old. And then... Uh, yeah, I wanted to read this one partially because uh, I was thinking to myself uh, the Odyssey is the inspiration for Ulysses somewhat and you could also come up with reasonably several books or collections that could resemble uh, the Metamorphoses but I couldn't really think of a good one that uh, was really similar to the Iliad. Though I was trying to compare it to like city novels, but yeah, I, I think I think it's interesting. All right, that's that's enough about the classics. Everybody knows about those. Um, so I got uh, a couple other good ones that I've been wanting for a while. This completes. Uh, the books of William Gaddis that I didn't have, Agape Agape, which I've read and I really enjoyed. I also have coming in the mail uh, Correction by Thomas Bernhard, which I don't know if that book specifically, but Thomas Bernhard was an inspiration for this book of William Gaddis. And uh, yeah, I've, I've been thinking of this phrase that Thomas Bernhard said in one of his interviews that uh, young people can still have, like, basically can still have character. Young people can still have character. Because all you need is a dirty pair of pants and some wine to live. And, like, you know, of course he didn't actually mean that. Like, literally, but, you know, he's right. Because uh, the reason I thought of that with William Gaddis is because the recognitions, I can't think of a more perfect, like, young person's novel in that way of, uh, you know, no compromise, no compromise. And Gaddis may have been one of the only guys to, to maintain that, but, uh, yeah, I've noticed a lot of people, they, they lose it. Uh, let's see, I also got, uh, Gaddis's, uh, final novel published when he was alive and uh, fourth novel frolic of his own and that and this one because it was the national book award winner you can get it for a pretty reasonable price so that's that's nice and then uh yeah one other one i'll just go over quickly i've been watching victor davis hansen talk about world war ii a lot and uh been reading uh, A Woman in Berlin, The Anonymous Diaries. So then I got this book at my local bookstore, A World at Arms, which is like a huge, basically, textbook on uh, a global history of World War II. So, yeah, if you guys are really into World War II, I'm also really into World War II. Uh... 
Oh, one that I got on my Kindle that I'm reading, uh, Void Star by Zachary Mason. It's a science fiction uh, book that came out last year, and his first book that he published was, like, I think called Lost Tales from the Odyssey. I think that's wrong. I think I got that wrong slightly. But anyway, it's, uh, it's like, uh, kind of like a Rosencrantz and Guildenstern is to Hamlet. It's like secondary stories from the Odyssey that are less well known. So I thought that was interesting. I haven't read it, but I just, uh, there's a, like an hour long talk by him on YouTube and he kind of talks about it. And then Void Star just came out and I saw really good praise from it. A lot of people said it was like hard to understand and confusing, but they seemed like the type that only read like easy science fiction stuff. So I feel like if it's a, if it's a hard science fiction book, it should be about right for uh, <laughs> dude, <laughs> so, uh, one of my friends just, uh, it's, you know, like one of those little Facebook things I'm recording on my phone. He asked, uh, why did Rilke write a novel? <laughs> dude, what the, what kind of question is that? All right. And, uh, let's see what else, what else, what else, what else? Okay, one more, no, two more, and then I'll get into my, my 90s nostalgia. So I also got, uh, luckily, I've been waiting for this one for like a year to have a, like, be under a reasonable price. The Return of Philip Latinowicz. It's a Croatian novel. I think he's considered like one of the best Croatian authors ever. Well, I don't know how old Croatia is, so that may be somewhat of a, an exaggeration, but... Yeah, I read this earlier um, Earlier in the school year, later last year, however you want to say it. But it is a very good book. It's one of those just really good modernist books by uh, just a really, really smart guy, thought about a lot of stuff. I would compare it closely to The Notebooks of Malta Lords Briga. Or maybe like the portrait of the artist as a young man, but this guy's older. He's had a 23 year absence from his hometown and then he goes back. So it's kind of like that, but it's, it's almost like a portrait of the artist as a young man, as if he was like in his mid forties, looking back at himself as a young man and uh, trying to recall it. Oddly enough, that connects to my almost next thing. I also got uh, Edward Gibbon, the, uh, the, the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. This is the uh, Everyman's Library Edition. This is the first three volumes out of six. And, uh, oh yeah, another, another one I got here. So I wanted to get this for a long time because it's pretty well known for its, uh, pro style. He's pretty well known for his pro style. And also for a long time, I've wanted a good book on Rome. I've been trying to find ones and, you know, it's just such a massive field. And I feel like a lot of the books are written for like, People who don't actually care or, you know, people who just want a simple narrative. But, uh, you know, basically I think it's best to just be as confused as possible. So I want like a really good academic book, but not, not something that's like, you know, footnote after footnote. So yeah, probably hard to, hard to, uh, get exactly what I want, but when I find it, it'll be nice. And then uh, to go along with that Edward Gibbon, I also got uh, Life of Samuel Johnson, as told by James Boswell. 
and I got this, it was mostly in my mind because um, I'm reading Pale Fire for a class and the, I always mess this word up, epigraph, that I get it right, is by, is a section of the life of Samuel Johnson. Whoa. And then another book I'm reading for a class, The Sun. Guess what its epigraph is? The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. I didn't even realize that. I'm a sheep. I, j I just I just follow. <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding, but that's true. And uh, all right, now now I'll get into the the focus of this one, kind of the '90s. So I've been thinking a lot about the '90s, mainly because I've been looking at this guy's works, Nick Land. And um, he's kind of like an interesting, uh, maybe you call him a thinker. He uh, writes about, well, let me, let me see here. Mm, I'm not sure how, there, it's not easy to like introduce him. I think he's called like a right wing accelerationist, <laughs> which means that... Um, he wants to try to accelerate capitalism to wherever its destination is, but he doesn't want to accelerate it to bring about communism, which would be left-wing accelerationism. Um, but yeah, he writes stuff about like George Bataille, he writes about the Dark Enlightenment, uh, he writes about uh, Kant, Heidegger, Nietzsche, Schopenhauer. Um, and then he really gets into like, I think he's, some of his stuff is considered theory fiction, but uh, yeah, it's very interesting. And this spans, as you can see from the front, it's uh, 1987 to 2007. And when I was reading his stuff from like the middle, which presumably was published in the 1990s, it gave me the same sort of like feel as the lost scrapbook and that really got me going in like the 90s because i started listening to like nirvana and all the all the 90s music and it's really weird because uh i was born in 1995 so i can actually remember the 90s and i think one interesting thing that I thought of is, well, it's it's not an interesting thing that I thought of it. It's it's just interesting, and I happen to think of it. Is that um, whenever you're really little, you're extremely impressionable, and the music, it almost you know it's almost like it invades you because, <clears throat> for me with 90s music, I know almost all of it. Like, uh, I couldn't tell you the names and titles of hardly anything, but I know almost every song in these long lists of like, you know, top 100 songs of the 90s, I will recognize almost every one. And there must be something to that related to like just children's huge absorption capacity where they can just take in so much information daily and keep it forever like languages and everything it must be related to that you know it just must be and I wonder how that has affected me because surely if I can remember every single one of these songs they must be you know in my brain maybe I dream of them Maybe they're just completely unconscious, just shifting around and combining themselves with each other randomly. No, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here on the gradual production of thoughts while speaking. But, yeah, I do wonder what effect it has had on me. It's either good or bad. No, I mean, it's either really good or really bad. Because, uh... 
as far as I can tell, whatever effect it had on me, it didn't have that effect on other people. Unless I was just overexposed or something. Alright, enough of that. Um, another book that I got, because I actually saw on a, on a, a literature forum, somebody was asking about the 1990s. I recommended Evan Dara and Nick Land, which, uh, you know, oddly enough, they have four letters in each word. But someone recommended this book, Generation X by Douglas Copeland, which is actually where the term Generation X came from, like Generation Y and all this stuff, which I thought was interesting. But as far as I can tell, it has a lot of the same... So I haven't read Infinite Jest, but I have it sitting right here. I've been looking at it as like a 90s sample. But um, I gather from a lot of David Foster Wallace's interviews where he talks about Infinite Jest that a lot of the concerns in this book are the concerns that David Foster Wallace had. And I think that's probably because I think they were born in the same year, or it was very close to the same year, and I think that uh, Douglas Copeland wrote this book much faster than David Foster Wallace wrote Infinite Jest for obvious reasons, length and complexity. This book's only like 180 pages or something. So. I think whenever these things happen, like, uh, so another thought I had recently is that you can tell when a novel is good by how much it makes you want to learn about the time. Now, I don't think that's a universal statement, but it's definitely true for me. Like, anytime I read an extremely good novel, it makes me want to learn a lot about the time period. And, uh, this happened recently with The Recognitions. I just... You know, I really dove into the 1950s, really enjoyed it. Not not super in-depth, but, like, I wanted to try to capture it. Listening to the music, you know, looking at the art, uh, watching documentaries, watching movies from the time, about the time, and things. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I've also had the same experience with the Austrian modernists. I wanted to learn so much about Austria of that time, and Germany also. Um, for World War II it's almost been the opposite I love the time period and I'm struggling to find a good novel that represents it I just recently tried to watch Come and See but uh, didn't really didn't strike me for whatever reason but I would recommend his other movie that was from 1965 I think called Adventures of a Dentist it's uh, the score was by Alfred Schnittke who's extremely good he's one of my favorite composers that uh, was alive recently uh, it's really it's a really good movie <laughs> it's kind of it's like a weird movie but it, it's very good um, yeah so I uh, trying to get into the 90s now and I, I think I'm gathering some pretty interesting stuff but It's kind of weird that I was alive then, but I was in such, I was so young that I don't need, like it, you know, I was obviously there and I can remember stuff from it, but it's just, you know, it's weird. And uh, I was thinking about this because, you know, in some sense, my time, the time now, like the late 2000 teens are going to be probably one of the most um, most available times for me to write about if if I do end up writing about them if I end up writing about my own life basically if I end up writing like semi-autobiographical or trying to capture my time period something like that something like the good modernist did because uh, when you think about Joyce you know he uh, in 1922 when he was 40 he published something about 1904, which um, I believe he was 22 then or 23 
in Dublin, which is when he left Dublin. And, you know, that, that obviously was such a big time for him that he wanted to write that much about it. And I think there's something to that. I think there's something to, like, your early 20s or late teens as far as, like, when you actually... You know, like your late teens, you actually get intelligent and you're able to think for yourself really easily and, you know, you can learn extremely quickly, really complex things really quickly. And uh, you're also kind of absorbing everything. I think, like uh, Thomas Bernhard said, you have conviction. You can, you're able to have conviction then rather than, you know, constantly uh, give up or something like that. Yeah, and I've been imagining what I would write about. Like, I was, if I was trying to capture this time period, what would I do? Would I try to imagine, oh, who would be the Faust of this time period? Would it be someone in the intelligence field? Would it be someone, like, some sort of underground, like, I don't know, primitive electronic musician, like, trying to make really primitive like drum music or you know who would it be I don't know it's hard to it's hard to say but uh, I think it's really interesting to think about it's really fun to think about but uh, all right so yeah I kind of I talked mostly about what I wanted to talk about so if you have any recommendations on 90s stuff uh, yeah feel free to recommend it So I want to get as good of an idea as I can about it. Oh, I, I've, I'm interested in uh, William T. Volman's A Royal Family. Because I was watching this short clip by a Louis Thoreau documentary about uh, this one pimp who was in jail. And it was really interesting. I also looked up... Um, Iceberg Slim, who seems pretty neat. But uh, yeah, if you have any recommendations, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, sorry about how loose this video was. Alright, this is a Gang Boss.